Friends, fungus has come a long way, I think in part because of Know the Cause, this show. It's been on the air and we're in our 22nd year. Only a dozen years ago, fungus caused a lot of problems, but scientists don't know about it. Currently, the Center for Disease Control says, okay, it's a real problem. It manifests with weird symptoms all over the body. If you're not getting better, think fungus. Okay, we'll talk about that. Dr. Ganum is here from Case Western. Love this guy. Dr. Ganum is going to talk about gut plaque. Did you know that? I'm going to talk a little bit about fingernail and toenail fungus and then healthy whipped cream. All that and more on this Know the Cause. For the past 45 years, I have dedicated my life and my whole career to finding the root cause of disease. And I now know with certainty that we must play a role in our own health care. I'm a self-care advocate. You know what? Every time you change your diet for the better, exercise, or swallow a nutritional supplement, so are you. Now welcome to Know the Cause. Friends, I have been doing this. I, I stopped and reassessed things the other day. I got back from Vietnam in 1971, so 48 years ago I got back from Vietnam, and I have been studying mycology, the study of fungus, really since. I came home, I had miserable symptoms, a lot of you guys know my story, and uh, I didn't know where they were coming from. I couldn't get in an elevator and ride up to the top floor of where I was working, a hospital I was working in. If another person was on it, my heart would beat, I'd start sweating, I was so nervous. I had bleeding skin, you know, at the fold of my arms, and everything was gone awry. Who'd have thought that post-traumatic stress from a war would have affected a 20, 21-year-old kid? I later found out that all of this jungle rot I had all over my body was probably eating through the few layers of skin, and it had become what we call a systemic mycosis a systemic bloodstream infection, liver, gallbladder, heart, pericardium around the heart. So these fungi don't just get between my toes and cause athlete's foot, but they're inside my body. So systemic fungal infections as opposed to local ringworm, things of that sort, jock itch, things like that. Systemic fungal infections are real. They mimic many other diseases. And when I got into this field, I was absolutely laughed at. I was scoffed, but there was some scientific support. Old medical textbooks were saying, okay, fungus is a problem, but nobody's seeing it. Practitioners aren't trained this way in their medical schooling. They still are not today. So just be aware, what this show is all about, I didn't name it C4 Doctors, Try Seven Drugs. I named it Understand the Etiology, Know Why This Is Going On know why the depression, know why the horrible back pain, know what's going on. We're taught that we can't know that. Where did you get your medical degree? Where did I get mine? Only a doctor can know that. Wrong, folks. What I've discovered the past 48 years is we are much more in control of our health than anyone will have us believe, okay? So I want to take you back to where the study of fungus was even a dozen years ago. And then let's go forward. Thank God the Center for Disease Control, the governors of you know, medical things, all things medical and research in America, what the Center for Disease Control is now saying about fungus. So let's start here just a dozen years ago. In our lives, that's absolutely nothing. But here's what the prestigious American Academy of Microbiology was saying in the year 2007. <clears throat> and I quote him, fungi are the cause of many outbreaks of disease but are mostly ignored. What? Fungi can cause a number of life-threatening diseases. What? Many people, scientists, I'll put in parentheses there, doctors among them, are largely unaware. Now, if you live here in the U.S. and this broadcast to 200 countries, if you live here in the U.S., you immediately are thinking what I thought 12 years ago. Houston, we have a problem. Fungus can cause death and we're not training our doctors to understand that. Let me tell you the sad news. <clears throat> Zoom forward with me to the year 2019. We're still not. I wonder why. I often wonder why. But I won't delve into my personal thoughts on this. But you have to understand one of the billion, multi-billion dollar selling drugs is a fungus. It's a mycotoxin. It's a poison made by fungus. You see, penicillium is the mold. 
the poison it makes, we call penicillin. And there's a hundred derivatives or more of penicillin in the pharmacy today. Now, mind you, it's a poison, thank God, it kills tiny organisms like bacteria in tiny doses. But it can kill bigger organisms in very large doses. Just be prudent. Now I want you to see where the Center for Disease Control has taken us just a few years later. <clears throat> this happens to be 2017. Fungal diseases like valley fever or bloodstream candida infections, we call candidemia, can cause serious illness and even death. Okay, now, the reason I wanted to highlight that, this is the Center for Disease Control. Doctors aren't going to read my website, Know the Cause. They're not going to read vitamin websites. They're going to read the Center for Disease Control. So fungal diseases like valley fever or bloodstream candida infections can cause serious illness and even death. And look at the next one. Inhaling fungus causes many fungal diseases. Are you with me on this? So living in a moldy home, you don't know, it smells a little mildewy, but nobody's gonna come into your home and say, wow, this place smells moldy, that's not the way it works, right? There's a test plate you can get at Home Depot's or Lowe's or any hardware store for 20 bucks that you can test mold in your home. Let's go on to what else the Center for Disease Control is saying. Hospitals, I agree, certain prescribed drugs and, other having, and, and having impaired immunity among other things, increases your vulnerability to fungus. So hospitals, antibiotics, birth control pills, ha and those having uh, can impair your immunity, and other things increase your vulnerability to fungus. And then, because fungal diseases mimic other diseases, like cancer, fungal diagnoses are delayed. And finally, this one, and this has always bothered me, talk to your doctor about the possibility of a fungal infection if you're not getting better. Okay. Didn't we just learn your doctor didn't learn about this in their medical training? What am I supposed to talk to my doctor about? He's been trained by the pharmaceutical company to believe every infection is either virus or bacteria, not fungus. Dig deep, then have a sit down with your doctor and say, I'm learning that fungus can cause the same symptoms when it infects you as bacteria. Doc, can we try some antifungals and a change diet? Friends, joining me right now is a man I finally met after 10 years of wanting to meet him. His name is Dr. Mahoud Ghanoum. He, uh, I, I met him at the airport here a short time ago. We shared a coffee and we shared stories. We need, here, amyloid plaque is all over the news. You know, Alzheimer's neurodegeneration. Cardiovascular plaque, atherosclerosis has been all over the news forever and ever. But what about gut plaque. Dr. Ganum, thank you. It's our honor to speak with you today. Teach us what goes on in the gut. Is there plaque there also? Yes, thank you very much for having me. You are talking about a very important phenomenon. It's like when we have plaque in our teeth. Every morning we wash and try to get rid of that. Guess what? In our gut also we form what we call digestive plaque, which is a biofilm. Biofilm. Biofilm, yeah, okay. Yes, yes. This is what happens in our gut. When you have imbalance in the microbiome, you have bad organisms such as bacteria, E. coli, Syracia marcescens, as well as the fungus candida. They come together and they form digestive plaque. And this digestive plaque is bad news. Why? Because when they are living under the protection of this material like jello, jello-like material they produce, which protects the organisms living inside the um, umbrella of this uh, biofilm. And when that happens, they start causing breakdown or damaging our digestive lining, okay? Our intestine lining, which is really very so supposedly to be impermeable to bad organisms, start to break down and you may end up having leaky gut. So that's why we need to control these biofilms. Yeah, biofilms, folks, I think of biofilms like those little stickies. You know, maybe one little bit of biofilm isn't a bad, but more and more and more piles on. This is a slippery membrane, and, and bad guys stick to it. And then, have you ever not brushed your teeth for, I was in Vietnam for a year. I probably didn't brush <laughs> my teeth. I probably went 20 days without brushing my teeth. And you get plaque. That's what you're talking about, Dr. Ganum, in the gut. 
Exactly. Okay. How, how do you break it up? How do you get rid of it? You know, that's what's the good news again is that we found food that can do a great job to get rid of, rid of it, such as apple cider vinegar, mm. co coconut oil, garlic have been shown to play a good role in breaking the biofilms. All of this, you can really break it down. Also, we were able to develop a probiotic that has both bacteria and fungus that breaks this biofilm. Once you break it, then you are going to protect your uh, gut and get rid of this digestive uh, really disharmony, if you will. And when we are drinking soda pops and lots of alcohol and fast foods, are we contributing to that plaque? Oh, no doubt about it. In fact, we did a study where we had some artificial sweeteners. You know, these are bad news where they cause imbalance. Yes. And you will have an increase, for example, of protobacteria. And this protobacteria is a sign of inflammation. So that's why this processed food, uh, artificial sweeteners, and all these prepared in a way which we don't even know the way they are done cause issue for our plaque and therefore we need to eliminate that and reduce as much as we can. Did you ever think 40 years ago that you would write a book, and I know this book's, you have quite a following, I know this book's gonna be a runaway bestseller, it's called Total Gut Balance. Did you ever think, here you are publishing <laughs> these brilliant books that your peers and scientists pay $200 a copy for and read it, did you ever think that you'd be publishing a book about simple things that we, the people, can, can help us <laughs> I tell you, I published six books, all in scientific, about the biofilms, about right. antifungals, and about adherence, how these bugs adhere. It's all mumbo-jumbo for the normal consumer. And to my pleasure, when I figured out I really need to help people control their microbiome, and put this total gut balance. It was such a new experience, which I am delighted to say I undertook. And he will now become a new friend of each and every one of you. His work has really set the stage for a better understanding of how food prevents biofilms, how food can prevent the buildup of plaque in the gut. God bless you, my friend. Good to see you. Thank you, likewise. Thank you. Okay, so you get up in the morning and today's not the day. You don't want to get on your bicycle and go down the road and ride it like you're, you know, really 15 years old. How about then reversing it? Lay down on your back and ride the bicycle. This is tough. It's really good for the core. It's good for the muscles. It's good for everything. It's good for circulation. That's what exercise is. Folks, so many of us are now following the Kaufman One Diet. We feel 50% better than we did last month. What you want to do is now add in a good pump, a circulation uh, addition. And that is, we've got two of everything, right? Arguably, one nose, but two nostrils. we got two of everything, but one ticker. Make sure you're good to it. They've always said, be true to your teeth or they'll be false to you, right? Same with your heart. Do this exercise. Use the rug next to your bed. Use your living room. Nobody has to see you. Try this for 15 or 20 seconds, and within a few months, you're gonna realize, man, I'm sleeping better. Man, my legs don't hurt, my hips don't hurt when I get up in the morning. There's something, you know this, there's something to the Kaufman diet. There's something else to exercising on a regular basis. Try this and then continue it. You know, many years ago, I made a discovery, and I think in my lifetime, I'm going to see my discovery be realized. Oh, I won't get credit for it, folks. It'll come from some big medical school, and that's probably fair, but I've been beating this drum for almost 50 years that fungus causes many, if not most, of our illnesses. I think diabetes, I think cancer, I think many autoimmune diseases, but your doctor doesn't learn about fungus or systemic fungal infections in their medical training. Good people, don't leave them. Very bright, twice my IQ. Help them with this information. As I did 30 years ago, I met a doctor and I he's a cancer specialist and I began to tell him 
um, where do you think we're going wrong in cancer? And I said, well, um, when you make your rounds to see all the cancer patients, you're pulling up the wrong side of the sheet. You're lowering the sheet to listen to their heart or listen to their juggler, their arteries, their veins. Uh, I think you should be pulling up the sheet from the bottom of the bed. And he said, what do you mean? I think you're going to find that cancer patients all have something called onychomycosis, toenail fungus. And do you know a couple weeks later, this is a true story, John, a couple of weeks later, I got a call from him uh, stating, I cannot believe this. We did rounds today and I snuck up the sheets, all these cancer patients, they saw seven of them, so that's a broad statement, but all these cancer patients had toenail fungus. Let's discuss this. I think if you're an athlete and your shoes and socks, I used to run three, five miles a day, ran half a marathon and lots of 10K runs. My feet were always wet. Um, and so I think that lends to toenail fungus. But if you're not a runner or a swimmer, uh, what does this mean? Is this a window to something bigger? Okay, toe and fingernail fungus. A fungal infection of the toenail or fingernail, also called dermatophytic onychomycosis. Okay, dermatophytic onychomycosis, <laughs> nail fungus. Look at yours. Dermatophytes are skin fungi that cause athlete's foot, jock itch, ringworm, etc. Skin fungi prefer dead surface tissues over living tissues. Okay, they tend to eat the dead cells. Uh, they're dermatophytes, they're called. And, uh, you know, those of you who have read my woman's book, uh, the woman's uh, fungal issue book, know a lot about these dermatophytes, okay? They, it, uh, toenail and fingernail fungus increases in nail fungal infections have been seen in diabetic and cancer patients, among others. Not surprisingly, Spornox, which is an antifungal drug used to treat nail fungus, has now been repurposed as a cancer drug. Is that a big wow? Some reports refer to Vicks VapoRub or tea tree oil as effective in clearing uh, nail fungal infections. Oh, takes longer. I remember there are many, the doctors I used to work with, there are many of their patients that didn't want to take Spornox or Diflucan or Lamisil because those filter through the liver and they can cause what we call hepatotoxicity. Never saw it but they preferred to take six months and maybe put some Vicks VapoRub, a little Band-Aid around the infected toe, and take longer, uh, but they wouldn't have to worry about their liver, okay? <clears throat> so, prescriptive medication for nail fungus. Oral medications for toenail or fingernail fungus is as followed. Terbenafin, which is also called Lamisil, and Itraconazole, which is also called Sporinox. Now, the next graphic, as I was writing this, folks, the next graphic actually blew my mind a little bit, but this is all documented. Do you suppose it's coincidental that both of these prescription drugs that kill fungus in our fingernails and toenails also kill or stop the spread of cancer cells? So itraconosol, Lamisil, and Spornox. I'm not a guy who recommends going to a doctor, but if I had cancer in my body, Sporinox is now being used for many types of cancer quite successfully. But your doctor doesn't know that cancer, I think, has a base of fungus. He just thinks it's some pathway that these drugs interfere with. It's very, very exciting that Lamisil has proven to assist cancer patients. Sporinox, now for the past three years, many doctors are aware of Sporinox. If I had toenail fungus and cancer, I'd get to a dermatologist to say, can I have some Sporinox? He'll look at your toenails and say, yeah. If you follow my Kaufman One diet and you're on the Sporinox, just watch what might happen to other issues of ill health in your body, okay? Might nail fungus be a window into your general health, okay? Although there's no, this was published in uh, squamous cell carcinoma, Although there are no available data on, in the literature to confirm or reject the contribution of chronic nail infections to malignant processes, we emphasize the importance of this coexistence, cancer and nail fungus, regarding the possible disguising of cancer by fungus. An early biopsy of the chronic persistent nail lesion may be preventive and beneficial regarding avoiding more aggressive treatments, maybe chemo, radiation, and achieving a favorable prognosis. Folks, when I read something like that from a medical uh, journal, why didn't our, all our doctors read that? 
So what they're saying is, you know, think fungus. Think fungus when you have a serious disease like cancer. It's worth a conversation with your oncologist because fungus and information about it inducing cancer is spreading. Okay, now you know. Hi, I'm Abby, and today I'm going to show you a quick how to make Kaufman One approved whipped cream. What we're going to use today is full fat coconut milk. The first thing you want to do is you need a little preparation is you need to place your can of full fat coconut milk and put it in the fridge. What you want it to do is you want it to separate from the water and the actual cream. So it only takes about an hour or so. Basically just you need to get it cold. And you go ahead and open up your can. And you're going to scoop out the cream that's at the top. It's nice and really thick. Now this actually comes out to be about two thirds of the can, so you're gonna get a lot of it. If you wanna use this on a dessert for something that will like cover an entire dessert, you'll probably need two to three cans, but if you just wanna use a little bit for like a single serving or just two people, just one can is fine. And then we're gonna add a little bit of sweetener. We're gonna add about two teaspoons of xylitol or stevia, whichever you prefer. Put that in. And then we've got, I've got just about, just barely under a tablespoon of vanilla. If you want to add more, that's fine. If you want to add less, that's okay. The less you add, the more coconutty it will be. So just remember that. And then you just put it in and turn your mixer on. And you actually will want to get it a couple of stirs before it's done. I just look it. So that way everything's mixed in nice and neat. And then turn back on real quick. Okay. And now you've got a nice creamy, see if I can get the can off, there you go. You got a nice creamy whipped cream that's great on dessert of berries or any of the other Kaufman desserts that we've done. It works really good. And just put some of that on there. And you've got yourself a nice little Kaufman approved treat. And you're good to go. That's really good. I'm gonna keep eating this. Folks, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you recording this because five years from now, if I'm not here, who's going to be teaching this, right? And you'll have it on record. Thank you so much, Dr. Ganum. Amazing. I knew about arterial plaque, just didn't know about gut plaque. Thank you, Abby. Always in the kitchen. That is whipped cream on the Kaufman One Diet. You can have that. And what would you think? Fungus then, fungus now fingernail and toenail fungus. It's all over the place. We're finally starting to recognize it. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.